Prove them all wrong. But I was just too. Fear is a primal emotion, but pride. Pride's going to be the death of you. Hello everyone, and today we're taking another look at the notorious, the depraved, Rocky Raccoon. It's been a while since I've talked about him on this channel, about seven months in fact, and a lot has changed since I last covered him. I'll be real, my last video is horrendously out of date, not just in terms of Rocky Raccoon, but with everything. Dream, I guess. He didn't do anything wrong to my knowledge, so I'm not sure why he's lumped in with these other people, but whatever. In particular, however, the last section of the video, wherein I discuss the future of Rocky Raccoon. I think Rocky is in a much more stable and positive place now, mainly focused on creating YouTube shorts using his original characters. Oh how wrong I was. Rocky Raccoon has completely fallen off as of late in quality, in behaviour, and even in his own care for his fans, which are supposedly the main reason he still makes videos. But after what I'm going to talk about, you'll see it's not for the adoration and community they bring him. In this video, I will be bringing up various examples that prove Rocky's complete and utter forsaking of morals and dignity, and the harmful effects it could have on his audience, starting with his recent content. Look at this video. The colours, the music that remixes audio from a kid's show. The characters are all screams that this is not meant for mature audiences. This is further cemented by the use of Rainbow Friends, a game made within Roblox, which has been rated for ages 7 plus. I think it's clear with the use of music, subject matter, and arguably the bright colours and moving characters that Rocky is trying to appeal to a younger audience here. And it's not just this video. He also has ones which use Pokemon, Super Mario, and so on. Children are famously easy to market to, as their prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that dictates decision and planning, is not fully developed yet. Rocky, like many other content creators who design their videos for younger audiences, takes advantage of this by enticing them with the aforementioned colours, music and subject matter. And due to a child's decision making skills not being fully developed yet, they'll probably replay that short video and others like it over and over again. This is what Rocky Raccoon wants, as this equals more views, which equals more money in his pockets. This is a key reason why a lot of YouTubers target younger audiences, and Rocky is no different. It wouldn't be too bad if this was where it ended as what mostly happens in his videos are vapid and meaningless. Rocky doesn't want to add any sort of narrative or character depth to his videos, it's not what they're intended for. We've got to have money. So instead, his characters just lip sync to music, dance around and try on outfits. Things which may first seem interesting, but are forgotten soon after you watch the video. Nothing truly connecting with the viewer. However, some of his videos take on themes of an adult or sexual nature. Characters that would be dancing would now be putting themselves in suggestive positions, to say the least, and the outfits they would wear would echo sexual roleplay. Why the fuck is any of this in videos which initially target themselves towards kids? The only reason I can think of is the idea of sex cells. A phrase in marketing which represents the idea of using sex appeal and provocative imagery in advertising to sell what is being advertised. On YouTube, phenomena such as clickbait have shown time and time again that audiences are more engaged or are more willing to engage with a piece of media if it has some sort of sexual nature to it. Rocky capitalises on this fact by including adult themes in his videos, possibly in hopes that they get more attention, and thus money in his pockets again. But the conscious decision to include these adult themes in videos which initially target themselves towards children is incredibly distasteful and negligent. Children are not emotionally or psychologically prepared to understand sexual behaviour, and getting them to witness such behaviour unexpectedly when the video is at first so innocent puts them at terrible risk and shows just how much Rocky does not care about his own audience, only seeing them as a means 
to an end. But because his videos are so nothing, the sexual themes usually being their only means of impacting the viewer, Rocky Raccoon has adopted an audience of porn addicts. <laughs> Who the fuck are you people? I thought I hired pussy! That won't settle for anything they can't jerk off to. This can be seen clearly when comparing the success of Rocky's Patreon to the failure of his makeshift plush. Rocky Raccoon's Patreon is quite notorious if you've seen his YouTube shorts. Advertising his Patreon is often the catalyst for the sexual themes in his videos, characters being censored out with the site's logo, implying that to see them uncensored, you'll have to become a member. This makes somewhat sense, as Rocky's Patreon advertises a tier known as Golden Raccoon, which allows the member to access adult content of his characters, as well as an 18 plus Discord. This strategy of marketing, as well as the general promise of adult content, is probably why his Patreon is as popular as it is, with around 345 members as of writing this. Clearly, sex sells. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! On the other hand, Rocky Raccoon's mateship plush is quite unknown, as it wasn't as advertised as his Patreon. Mentions and links to it only really being present in some shorts' as descriptions, and in one or two of his videos. Mateship, for those who don't know, is a company that allows creators to create a plush of their character if the production of said toy is fully funded. The idea being that the fans of whatever the plush toy is representing will happily pay towards the toy in order to see it be produced, own the plush itself, as well as to generally support the creator of said representation. Rocky Raccoon's plush toy was going to be just a plush of himself, nothing else. This plush, unlike his Patreon, had no adult content to rely on, and thus just had the character of Rocky Raccoon, the version of him portrayed in his short videos to interest his audience. But the character of Rocky Raccoon is not multifaceted or deep, nor relatable or fun to watch. He, like the rest of Rocky Raccoon's characters, are mere puppets that only serve to push a popular trend or sexual theme. His character is as vacant as his content, and thus no one was interested in funding a toy of a character they had no attachment to. That wasn't sexual. My wee wee. Resulting in the failure of the makeshift plush. But that's just Rocky the character. What about Rocky the person? Well, I highly doubt anyone would buy a toy of him either, as he has shown time and time again that he is a temperamental and egotistical person. This can be seen whenever Rocky Raccoon responds to criticism or backlash. A more recent example of this can be seen by looking at the YouTube channel Judge. Judge is a relatively small channel that had about 3,000 subscribers around the time she uploaded her video regarding Rocky Raccoon's content. The criticisms she had regarding his content were relatively tame all things considered, mainly pointing out the inappropriate themes in his videos targeted towards younger audiences, as well as his failure to combat criticism properly, funnily enough. Rocky Raccoon actually saw this video and proceeded to leave a multitude of comments, snarkily addressing the criticisms in the video, but not without leaving some remarks that were so ego-filled the id would have been jealous. Such as, at least you got some actual attention for shitting on me, and cause trashing on me and accusing me of things that were resolved will be your only ticket to relevance. In that last comment particularly, Rocky Raccoon is referring to his older content, and more specifically the controversy that took place wherein he sexualized Friday Night Funkin' characters, and the doll from Squid Game, who appears to resemble a toddler in the Squid Game series. He claims this controversy was quote unquote resolved through him addressing it in his community posts, but I can't find any evidence to support this. I did however find a screenshot from a lost apology video of his, wherein he claims the sexualization was incidental, meant to be satire, and done to boost views. Now, not only is this just a really lousy apology, and seems to be more saving face than anything else, it also proves that Rocky's content uses these sexual themes and characters for views, and is something that is deeply rooted into his channel. Furthermore, having your community posts and apology videos being so hard to find, it comes off as though you haven't addressed the controversy at all. Not to mention the apology itself, or what can be found of it, isn't that good, and thus doesn't fully resolve the problem. Judge was completely in the right to criticise you for this. Going back to his comment where he sarcastically remarks, at least you got some actual attention for shitty on me, coupled with the only ticket to relevance comment, it seems as though Rocky is trying to betray Judge as someone who only made the video for the attention it would garner her. But, unlike Rocky Raccoon's content, Judge's video has substantial value, and mentions fair criticisms, making the point of this video being solely for attention seems a bit unlikely. On top of that, the accusation itself is highly hypocritical, 
as Rocky Raccoon's YouTube channel relies relentlessly on trending topics, popular things, and recognizable characters in his animations, and can be seen throughout most if not all the videos he's made. But above all, the comments themselves show plainly how Rocky Raccoon is incredibly sensitive to criticism, even when, in his eyes, the criticism in question is outdated. This is further proven by the fact that he has added comments talking indirectly about the situation publicly on his channel's community tab as well as on his Twitter, almost incentivizing his own community to go witch hunting for these supposed haters, which is also incredibly negligent and ignorant of him. He had a similar response in a previous situation where he tried to employ a freelance writer simply known as Gary on Twitter. The story goes that Gary had created a post which detailed how he was looking for work as a writer for animation. Rocky Raccoon had supposedly inquired about this and they began to talk. However, it was cut short as Gary saw Rocky's channel and decided to not associate with him, <laughs> understandably, immediately blocking him and making a post warning others about him indirectly. This caused Rocky to become extremely angry, writing furiously about him in several community posts. While I imagine being suddenly blocked doesn't feel the best, it's incredibly immature of him to write about Gary publicly in such an aggressive manner, calling him a fucking loser and telling him to go to hell. It also shows a clear lack of clarity, as the nature of his content is not something most people would want to associate with, yet he doesn't understand that. He also brags about his success in these posts, showing his complete pride and egotistical nature, which is something that can also be seen in his posts regarding Judge and the haters. However, amongst all these posts where he boasts about his success and gloats on those criticising him, there is one post where he does show a remnant of clarity, that being the post where he talks about the failure of his makeshift plush. I was very disappointed when people did not want to fund the $2 to make my makeshift plushie happen. It was so embarrassing that I don't think I even want to sell merch anymore. I went on makeshift to buy some plushies and I saw all these creators that I actually watch got their plushies like 5,000% funded and I'm like, I feel like I have failed as a content creator. And Rocky, you have. Your videos target an impressionable audience and contain inappropriate themes that harm the minds of said audience. On top of that, they're being pumped out with every human eye blink and rely on trends or said inappropriate themes for attention as they have zero meaning otherwise. You attack lesser content creators when they criticize your work, no matter the severity of criticism, and put yourself on a pedestal despite still clearly being hurt by those lesser content creators. You claim you care about your fan base when you're clearly only making videos for monetary gain. If people do frequently watch you, it's only the jack-off to your content. You claim to be human, but you are more like a content farm than an actual sentient YouTube channel. You may have 3 million subscribers and are most likely swimming in pools of money some people will never see in their entire life, but you have no real community that will support you and follow you wherever you go or whatever you do unless porn is involved. You are not a content creator. You take advantage of the system. And those, those are the sins of Rocky Raccoon. And that's where I was going to leave this video. But then I found something. Recently, I received a comment on my first Rocky Raccoon video from a user known as Just Unknown. He claimed to be a contributor and editor for the Rocky Raccoon Wikitubia page, a source of information I used in my video, and clarified some things regarding the information I used, such as Rocky's birthday as well as his various controversies. But in the midst of all this, he mentioned that, along with Raymond Fox, Rocky had another NSFW alias, this alias being Yoshin Around. My first thought when I found this account on Twitter was that while Raymond Fox's relationship to Rocky Raccoon is still very discussed and up in the air, there was no denying that Yoshin around was Rocky Raccoon. The art style he has is exactly the same, his banner is literally Rocky Raccoon art, and he also has links to Rocky's Patreon on his account. Not to mention the fact that he's posted NSFW Rocky Raccoon animations before, and the fact that the Yoshin around mascot character has even appeared in some of Rocky's own videos. This is undeniably him, and the fact that this account is so clearly tied to him makes what I found on this account much more disturbing. Speaking of retweets and reposts, all of the retweets and reposts on this account are of gay porn, both real and drawn. The drawn imagery in particular, depicting intimate moments with characters from games and animation, some of which are horrifically underage. There's one featuring Max from a Goofy movie, who, depending on what Goofy movie is inspiring this 
gate gay porn is either 18 years old or 14 years old. An example that can't be negotiated with, however, is one featuring Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog, who is canonically 8 years old. Like I said, this is heavily disturbing, even more so when you realise that this account is clearly associated with a YouTube account that targets children. I think what makes this different from the other examples of Rocky using inappropriate themes in his content is that there is no excuse of money or attention here, just pure sickening behaviour. And that's not all. Rexana Raccoon was a Rocky Raccoon fan, an avid one at that. For one, she created her whole online persona around her Rocky Raccoon original character, and used to defend Rocky and repost fan art of his on her Twitter up until recently. She was also a Discord moderator for Rocky Raccoon's patrons-only Discord server, which is a position she no longer holds, nor wishes to. This was due to some events that transpired within the server itself that made her and the rest of the moderation team extremely uncomfortable. The events began when multiple members on Rocky Surfer began posting adult artwork of underage cartoon characters, some including Gumball from The Amazing World of Gumball, and again, Max from a goofy movie. Looks like his content has attracted a weird crowd, uh, who'd thought? This prompted great conflict within the server between the moderation team and these members, as this was considered as intolerable behaviour by the team, understandably. These members were later reported to Rocky himself, who, instead of agreeing with the moderation team's suggestions to ban these members outright, began partially defending them. And advocating to keep them in the server, and for them to not be antagonised by the moderators. Particularly with one situation where a member posted adult artwork featuring Max Goof, he claimed that Max was adult presenting, and that a lot of furries are going to be thirsty for him, adding, heck, even I am? Basically a taller version of his teen self? What the f- Surprisingly, this wasn't a sufficient enough defence, and the perpetrator was banned, which Rocky was not happy about, of course. In another situation, a group of members were sharing art depicting Gumball from The Amazing World of Gumball. When the moderation team saw this, it was immediately put into question. Screenshots of messages between these members were taken and notified to Rocky, who replied to the screenshots, declaring boldly that, technically, there's nothing wrong with this? Oh, they should enable spoilers though, yeah, 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 what, 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 what the f- now, Unlike the Max Goof situation, where I suppose you could somewhat argue that he was the adult version of himself, seen in the Goofy movie, Gumball, in all his iterations, is 12 years old. There is no excuse at all. Once again, Rocky tried to defend those members, arguing for a timeout and warning instead of an outright ban. After all these members were dealt with, Rexana personally DM'd Rocky, saying that she didn't want to work with him anymore, having dealt with the members herself along with the rest of the moderation team. The main reasoning, on top of the uncomfortable situations Rocky had put her and the moderation team through, was that he himself was childish, constantly responding to drama and controversy in outlandish and immature ways, as well as his skewed moral compass, which she had been trying to correct for nearly six years reportedly, to no avail. Rocky didn't respond to this too well, unsurprisingly, but eventually came round and accepted Rexana's quitting. This moment, I feel, was bittersweet. I can imagine no longer having to be in contact with and having to deal with such an immature and revolting person being somewhat relieving. But no matter how hard Rexana had tried, Rocky had learnt nothing in his time being in contact with her. Through the screenshots that Rexana Raccoon would later gather and post to the public, you can see that none of her attempts to teach Rocky right from wrong went anywhere or were truly taken in, always responded to by Rocky with a hollow okay. Rocky Raccoon has not grown from this situation, in fact he has continued to respond angrily to criticism and backlash as seen with Rexana Raccoon's DMs with Yoshin around. Knowing this, it's also not too far-fetched to imagine that Rocky Raccoon will probably continue to be as lenient as he has been on his Discord members that show pedophilic tendencies. He is an unforgivable man that allows emotions like ego, anger, and lust to take control of him quickly and is unwanting of any guidance and help to become better, only thinking about himself. The other day, Rocky Raccoon responded. 
He hosted a live stream in which he attempted to respond to everything that had been said about him, which included past controversies and new ones. He confirmed that Raymond Fox was in fact an old account of his, had mentioned the Squid Game doll situation, and had even said that he regretted advertising his Patreon in his videos. Most of the two hours in which this live stream took place in, however, was filled with Rocky ranting and raving to himself, Rexana and her screenshots, as well as to the live stream chat, which was not on his side for the most part. He had a few good points, but finding them amongst all the noise felt like finding a needle in a haystack, and even the good points he did make still didn't clear him of being at fault. When he wasn't hurling playground insults at Rexana or whoever, he claimed that he wasn't aware of the full context when he was talking to his moderators regarding the weird members, which just shows how oblivious he was to his own server and his lack of any real care for his community and keeping them safe. The part of the stream that stood out to me the most, however, was at the very end. His anger had been building throughout the whole stream, and near the end of it, it all culminated to the point where Rocky was crying. When I first saw this, I started laughing, I won't lie, as I had no real sympathy for him after all I had seen in my research, and I still don't, but he just continued to cry and cry, not turning off the stream or anything, and then, it hit me. This very moment where I am watching this grown 20 something year old man cry on a stream to thousands of others, it's all of his own doing. His history of bad choices and decisions, made either emotionally or tactically, all of it had finally caught up to him in this moment of pure sadness. It wasn't of clarity though, mind you. He was crying because of all the accusations made against him. But nonetheless, it was still the lowest point we had seen him at. The story of Rocky Raccoon is a tragedy, really. A talented Vietnamese artist who had been learning and mastering his craft, had even gotten jobs at various animation companies, decided to forgo all that to pursue YouTube. And while while he was successful, his empire was built upon clickbait and taking advantage of popular media for views, money and fame. He had suffered many conflicts and controversies due to this, but none were as damning as when people saw who he really was. An immature, egotistical, degenerate, hypocritical, borderline paedophile. That was the man he had become, and when they had shone a mirror onto his face, he wept. But not due to the reflection, but due to those who had shown him it. I never wish to talk about this man ever again. He may change in the future, become a better person. Okay, I won't be there for that. He disgusts me, and I wish to live my own life far, far away from him. Is there a moral to Rocky's story? Maybe. To me at least, it shows that selfishness, greed, pride, and other things like that will not take you far, and really limit you in your journey to real and honest success and adoration. But that's enough from me. Thank you for watching.